Hi, my name is Dear Tiagi, and due to popular demand from the poll I released yesterday, it seems like you guys want me to do SAT videos. So I'm planning on until probably the June SAT, I'll be making these SAT videos daily, focusing on key concepts, questions, problems in both math and reading and writing. So I'm planning on alternating between those. And I hope to you know prepare you guys all for the SAT. Even if you're not taking in June for the future, etc. And then after that, I'm planning on making other videos, such as maybe more calculus videos, physics videos, computer science videos. It's really um, in the air what I'll make after that. Okay, so SAT. So hard SAT math problems, actually. So to start, my number one tips, or there are two things you need to know when you're doing hard SAT problems, and there's two reasons why you might be getting them wrong. So the first reason why you might be getting an SAT, a hard SAT problem wrong, or you might think it's hard, is because the topic is unfamiliar, right? So if the topic is unfamiliar, then it's going to be hard because you won't know how to solve it. So my tip for these questions, if you like have a hard topic, is to you know study. <laughs> These topics it's kind of basic but you know if you don't understand a topic or how to solve it then there's no way you're gonna get the question right right and I think the best way to identify these hard topics that you're unfamiliar with is just to take a practice test take a practice test and when you're taking it note down the topics or the problems they were hard to you because you didn't know the topic and afterwards what you can do is there's a ton of free resources online where you can um, see and learn about the topic so you know, I'm a resource, I'll be posting videos on hard topics, but there's also other resources like Khan Academy and, you know, other YouTube videos. Second reason why a hard SAT question, or SAT question might be hard, is it might be a word problem or tricky wording, right? And the number one tip is to practice. By practicing, you get to understand how these problems are worded, how College Board like words them, and your brain just gets into a pattern of knowing how to solve these problems and how to identify key pieces of information. So when studying for the SAT, I recommend only studying topics for maybe like 10% of your time, and 90% of your time should be doing, spent doing practice. Because again, you can study all you want, but the SAT really is, um, there is not that many topics being tested on the SAT. It really is just how to see how College Board words the questions and how to answer them based on their wording or how to um, approach these like weirdly worded questions. There aren't too many topics, so I recommend really just practicing. That's the best way to um, improve your score on the SAT. Okay, let's try out some problems now. So I'm going to try out this. I printed out the problems, and I'm just going to attach them here, and we'll see if you guys can see them. I'm not sure. OK, so this problem. During a month, Morgan ran R miles at 5 miles per hour and biked B miles at 10 miles per hour. She ran and biked the total of 200 miles that month, and she biked for twice as many hours as she ran. What is the total number of miles that Morgan biked during that month? OK, so she ran and biked the total. Well, first, we need to set variables, right? So whenever you get a word problem like this, it gives you R and B. Well, there you gave us variables, R and B. So R miles, B miles. Now it's set up an equation to actually solve the problem. So she says she ran and biked a total of 200 miles that month. So R represents the miles she ran, and B represents the miles she biked. So R plus B has to equal 200. Next, it says that she biked for twice as many hours as she ran. So the way this is tricky is because it says twice as many hours, so time. So the time of biking is twice the time of running. So two times time of running equals time of biking. But we don't have time of riding, time of biking. Whenever we have two equations, we need, or sorry, whenever we have two variables, we need two equations to solve it. In this case, we have four variables, so we need four equations to solve it. But we can actually represent TR and TB in terms of R and B. So a formula you need to know is that speed is equal to distance over time, right? 
So time is equal to distance over speed. Now we can represent these using this formula. So distance is r miles, or for r we'll say, r miles, speed, 5 miles per hour. So r over 5. So 2, r over 5. Same thing with biking. Biking is b miles at 10 miles per hour, so b over 10. Okay, so now we have two equations that we can solve for uh, num total number of miles that she biked during the month. So uh, b is what we need to solve for. And so at this point, you can just plug it into your calculator to solve it. I don't have a calculator on me right now, so I'm just going to solve it by hand. But if we were solving it by hand, what we'd do is we'd isolate b, or r in this case. So let's say I isolated r, so 20 divided by 5, 4r equals b. So 5r equals 200, r equals 40, therefore b equals 160, and our answer is d, b equals 160. So again, the process with real problems is you have to read the problem, identify the variables you need, and uh, write the equations. And then at that point, you can plug it into Desmos. If you plug it in, it'll give you an intersection point. You can find your answer through there. Or you can solve it. Again, don't solve it. It's probably easier just to use Desmos. It's faster. And you're less likely to make a mistake. OK, next. Okay, so one solution to the given equation can be written as j minus square root k, where j and k are constants. What is the value of j, k? And the equation is x squared minus 12x plus 7 equals 0. So in this case, we can't actually use Desmos, because if we use Desmos, Desmos would just give us a um, decimal value. And what we need is we need a value in the form of j minus square root of k. So we're going to have to use actual uh, math for this one. So let's say we have x squared minus 12x plus 7, and we need to solve this. So right at the bat, seeing a square root, it kind of gives it away that you have to use the quadratic formula. But if you look at the question, you really can't solve this any other way. You can't use factoring. I suppose you could use complete the square, but I think in this case, uh, using the quadratic formula would be the easiest way to approach it. So quadratic formula, x equals negative b, so 12, negative 12, negative is positive, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 144, minus 4ac, 4 times 1 times 7, 28, divided by 2a, which is just 2. So x equals 12, plus or minus the square root of uh, 116, divided by 2. And we need to represent it as j minus square root of k, one of the solutions. So one of the solutions is going to be 12 minus square root 116 over 2. And so we need to divide this too, because it can't be a um, uh, fraction or answer. So we have to take out a 2 from this. So 116 is the same as 4 times uh, 25, uh, 29. And so what we can do is we can take out the 4, because this is the square root of 4 times 29. So square root of 4 becomes 2, square root of 29. And so now we can divide. So if we divide, uh, 12 divided by 2 is 6. 2 divided by 2 is square root of 29. So 6 minus square root of 29. That's j minus square root of k. Now we can multiply. So our answer, we're looking for j times k. So j is 6, 29 is k. So 6 times 29. Our final answer is 174. So in this case, this is a um, fairly simple problem, but it was hard because we couldn't use Desmos to solve it. We had to actually use the quadratic formula. And once we got this answer, it wasn't in this form. So we, what we had to do is we had to rationalize it. Or not even rationalize it, we had to simplify it down a little bit. And then we were able to cancel out the denominator, and we were fine j and k. And then we could solve for the value. OK, one last problem, and then we'll be done for today. Okay, so if ABC is isosceles and M angle C equals 90 degrees, which of the following must be true? And they give us three options. So in this case, whenever you have a geometry problem, if they don't give you a diagram, always draw a diagram, right? 
So we know that, we'll start with the angles first. Angle C is 90 degrees. Okay. And ABC is isosceles. Okay, so let's consider what isosceles means. It means that two angles in a triangle are equal. So if angle C was the angle that was isosceles, let's consider that, then the other angle would be 90 degrees as well. And the final angle would have to be 0 degrees, which is impossible. That would just be a straight line. And the reason why, again, is because the, all the angles in the triangle add up to 180. So if C is 90 degrees, and that means A and C have to be the isosceles angles. C cannot be isosceles just based on triangle sum, triangle angle sum. So A and C are the isosceles angles, or A and B, sorry. And A and B are equal to each other, that means. So if C is 90 degrees, A and B have to be 45 degrees. Because again, uh, C, A plus B plus C has to equal 180 degrees based on the sum of the angles in a triangle. So these are 45 degrees and that. So now we're looking at uh, the values of the sides using tangent A and sine and cosine. So you guys should know this, but in a triangle like this, a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle, the side lengths are x, x, x root 2. And you can prove this using the Pythagorean theorem. So in isosceles triangles, what we know is that the angle here and the angle here, the opposite sides, this side and this side are equal, right? And we know from Pythagorean theorem, let's just call, let's say we didn't know this part. Let's say we called this and this. We know they have to be equal because of isosceles angles. So x squared plus x squared equals c squared, Pythagorean theorem, and 2x squared equals c squared square root. So c equals square root 2 times x, which is this side length. So that's just a formulation memorized, but again, that's x, x, x square root 2. So now we need to evaluate tangent, sine, and cosine at these values. So a helpful device to remember is so katoa. You probably guys, you guys probably learned this, but so katoa stands for sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. So in this case, tangent opposite over adjacent of A. So A opposite over adjacent, so tangent of A is equal to opposite divided by adjacent, which is 1. So 1 is true. 2, sine of A equals cosine of A. Sine of A is equal to opposite x over hypotenuse, x squared 2. And then cosine of A, adjacent over hypotenuse, so the same thing. So uh, 2 is also true. 3 sine of A equals this. Cosine of B, the cosine of B. So adjacent x over hypotenuse, x squared 2, same thing as this. So in this case, 1, 2, and 3 are all equal. So D is our final answer. So again, this is one of my examples. If you don't know a concept, if you don't know isosceles triangles, or you don't know trig, then it's going to be hard to solve. So my recommendation is to identify your weak spots and then work on learning these skills. And yeah, that's it for today, guys. Thank you guys all for watching, and I'll see you guys all tomorrow. Bye.